Hey everybody, it's Brad. We've got a video for Creator Club today. Uh, this is uh, Creator Club for April of 2017, and we are going to be digitizing from a backdrop again. Uh, surprise, surprise. We're going to be learning specifically how to use Bezier handles uh, in the creation of our artwork outlines um, so that we can create our shapes very efficiently. Um, uh, which is uh, an important skill to have. Uh, it makes everything else easier. The the more efficient your artwork is drawn, the better everything works in this program. Um, I've been learning um, as I as I continue to use this program uh, over time that it is it is vitally important that you draw your outlines with as few clicks as possible. Um, so to that end, I'm going to teach you Bezier handles today, um, and then also uh, after we get done creating the artwork and turning them into stitches. I'm going to show you uh, as a bonus how to adjust your underlay and stitch density and stuff like that for if you're going to sew on a stretchy fabric, like a knit fabric. Um, I ran into this the other day. I was digitizing um, a design and putting it on a shirt and um, there was a couple of things that, it, that didn't go right until I set uh, these settings that I'm going to show you. So we're going to do that. Um, it'll be like kind of part one and part two for this video. Um, and uh, so let's get everything set up. Uh, I want you to have your 5x7 or your 130x180 hoop selected. And the way you select it is you go to the Preferences button here. It looks like a little folder. And I renamed mine to 5x7, but if you look in, in this selection of different hoops, you'll see that one of them is 130 mm x 180 mm that's your that's your 130 by 180 hoop uh it's a five by seven you can rename it like i did like you know if i wanted to go and rename all of my hoops to their size in inches all you do is you select the one that you want to change like say this one this 150 by 150 that's a six by six so i can edit that and say six by six and hit okay and so it now is called that so that's what I did with this one so that's why mine says five by seven anyway it's, I think it makes it easier because I think an in inch is not metric but uh, anyway get your 130 by 180 or your five by seven up you say okay to that and that is my five by seven hoop um, and then you're gonna go to the create menu which is this one right here uh, looks like a little pointer touching some steel girders or something I don't know that is your create menu and uh, as you can see I'm in creator level 3 mode with all the different buttons um, because I have an educator copy I can switch between them I'm gonna leave mine in level 1 all the same tools are are, um, are in all all the different versions everybody's gonna have at least these tools uh, and that's all we need to work with today um, and what I want to do is use my uh, image button over here to bring in a backdrop picture. So we're going to left click on that. And um, this is the image we're going to use. It's the Orioles logo. Um, and uh, if you're in Creator Club, you'll have this on your CD. And if you're watching on the internet, then use Google to search for Orioles logo. And this will be one of the search results. Just download that. All right, so I'm going to open this, select that one, and hit open. And it brings my um, my image into the design field. Okay, So this is my backdrop. This is what we're going to be using to trace to bring in our, uh, our, our, our lines that we then turn into stitches. Uh, and I'm going to size this down a little bit. I'm not going to be uh, real specific on how big I want it to be. I'm just going to size it so it's a little bit smaller, about that ratio to the um, size of the um, the overall size of my hoop. So that looks that's like something that would actually fit in a in a in a four by four. Let's make it a little bigger, maybe. There we go. Okay, so size it size it down just a little bit. I guess you don't even really need to. I don't know why I was sizing it down. I'm going to zoom in and we are going to take a look at this design. So this design has two colors. We've got orange and black and the black is just simply an outline around the orange areas. Okay, so we are probably going to be able to just draw one set of lines and then uh, duplicate them so that we have one set that is the going to be the orange filled in part and one set that's going to be the black thick outline and I am going to use for the filled in part I'm going to use a fill stitch and for the um, the outer outline part I'm going to use a satin border stitch um, so that is the plan so let's go ahead and start bringing in our shapes um, I am going to say that I'm going to do this orange area first and 
So we're going to start bringing in our points. So we want to go to uh, the Draw with Points tool. It is the first one in the upper left hand part of the Draw section right here. I'm going to left click on that and the first point I'm going to bring in is this point here. Now there's two different types of points that we can create. Um, well there's more than that but the only ones we're going to worry about are the two points. Uh, one is called a cusp point and one is called a curve point and I have in the past created videos where I go in depth about the difference between a cusp and a curve but basically a cusp point is anywhere where the the lines come in and converge and create this little kind of heart shape basically the the two lines the two curves coming out are kind of coming in and they come to a point and then they go back in a different curve it's like kind of creating a new curve it's it's a point where two curves meet and if you can't tell if something is a curve or a cusp you can look at it and say okay does this make either the top or the bottom of a heart so this right here this point i can see that could be the top of a heart down here we can see that could be the bottom of a heart so that's kind of my uh, mental uh, thing that I ask myself when I'm like, okay, where is the cusp? Where is the curve? Anyway, when you're drawing in a cusp point, you're going to use the shift key to bring it in. So I want to hold down my shift key and click right here. Okay, so that was a shift and a click right there. And we can see that green dot. That is my first point um, on my curve. And we only actually need, need to have three total points to make up any given curve line and this will be the first one so this first curve that we're making is this shape right here so what we need to make this shape happen is one point that's going to be a curve point and then another point that's going to be a cusp point which is going to be this this right here is a cusp see how it's the bottom of a heart and if you're not you don't see exactly what I'm talking about just yet just hang on and just watch uh, and and I'll show you what it is that I'm talking about so um, when, when we you know finish drawing it so I need a point to be a curve up here it doesn't matter if it ends up matching up it doesn't matter so no shift and I just click there notice it's a straight line right now because it actually requires three points for it to be for anything to become a curve so as soon as I click down here and I'm gonna shift click to make this a cusp point shift click see how that just turned this into a curve it doesn't line up with my with my shape but that's okay we're gonna go we're gonna actually go back and make it line up but what we gotta do is get the points in first and now I want another curve point here because there's a gentle curve between here and here so I'm gonna no shift no shift left click and then excuse me and then shift left click here this is a straight line so I'm gonna do another shift left click here and then this has a little bit of a curve to it so no shift click in the middle and then shift click on the end and now this from here all the way around back to my first point is going to be a um, the, another curve so you know what that means I only actually am going to need one point between here and here okay so we're gonna go ahead and left click somewhere in here without shift clicking and then I'm going to close my shape using this button here and that's gonna connect this to this close my shape there we go alright now I know that doesn't that didn't make what looks like a curve this doesn't look like a curve what is going on here this is crazy Brad I know it looks crazy and this is why I'd never really messed with Bezier curves before until I started um, really uh, kind of playing with them and realizing how powerful they are um, so we need to make all these lines all line up here. So how are we going to do that? We can select any point on the line, any of these curves, we can left click and drag to move them so that they're close to being in the right place. You see how my line is wiggling around? So I can take that and get it pretty close and I can get this, and, but when I move this other part it messes up that one. So I'm going to undo what I did so far and instead I'm going to select this point directly by left clicking it. Now this is a pretty fine movement so if it takes a few tries don't get disheartened if you accidentally click off and then you don't have any points anymore just click on left click on your line again and you want to left click right on the point and it'll turn black 
and it will get these little handles. The handles are hard to see because they're also black. <laughs> but we can see that we've got two little handles coming off of this point, and we've got a single handle coming off of this cusp point, and another single handle coming off of this cusp point. So our cusps get one handle, and our curves get two handles because this is controllable both on this side and on this side, and this one is only going to control this side. That's why there's only one uh, handle there. These are called Bezier handles, and watch what happens when I left click and drag on one of them. See how I'm able to edit that curve, and it doesn't affect the other side. I'm just moving it, each one of these, so I've moved this one, and I moved this one, and look how perfectly that curve lines up with my JPEG image. It's awesome. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I just grab this and drag it out. I'm going to grab this one and drag it kind of up a little bit. You can see what happens as you're doing it. So if it's not doing what you want it to do, move in the direction that you want it to move. And it kind of, it takes a little bit of practice, but you can really bend it to your will very effectively. So the top curve here is now made of just three points, and it perfectly mirrors my artwork. How about that? Now, these guys, these like six points here, these are fine. I'm not worried about these. Um, and uh, so what we want to do is we want to fix this big mess going on right here. Uh, we're going to select our point um, that is going to be our curve point here. And if we go ahead and just grab... See, notice I didn't mention this before, but notice how we don't have those Bezier handles yet. We'll click on this. There's no handles coming off of this guy. As soon as you grab one of these lines and move it, that's when the handle kind of pokes out. <laughs> so we move these a little bit, and then we get the ability to edit these guys directly. So I'm going to grab this one and pull it out. I'm going to grab off of this cusp and pull it down until it's about where I want it. And then we can kind of readjust it on both sides until I like what I'm seeing and that is pretty darn good I could probably get it better though let's see drag that down and then we'll put, you can kinda nudge it kinda from both directions with these it's hard to describe how exactly it works you just kinda have to do it <laughs> you know and then you get a feel for how it's working uh, and then we want this one to come down a bit and then this one to kinda bump out a bit There we go. And then maybe I'll nudge the whole thing down. You know, I kind of just do it like by feel, you know what I mean? Like I just do it until it looks right to me. But I've found that as long as I don't make crazy movements, you know, and like go like really out there and move all around, that it works right. And you may have noticed that it, even though I said it only affects the one side, um, if, if you move it kind of laterally, it does affect the other side. But look at this. If I move only in one direction, if I move along kind of the axis that the line is already on, then it only edits the one side. Um, sorry if my terminology is not right. Anybody who knows the, <laughs> the right terminology for this stuff. Uh, but then another thing that we can do is if we just can't get it exactly right, we can also move the point and, and get ourselves a little bit more freedom. Notice I just accidentally clicked off. I'm going to click back on my point. So just take some time to experiment with this um, and, and get used to the way these handles work because they're really, they're really quite powerful in what you can do with them and replicate curves exactly with a minimum amount of points. I really, really enjoy doing this. See, I'm getting really close to it being dead perfect. It really doesn't need to be completely dead perfect anyway. You know, I just, I just want it to be dead perfect. So I'm just going to move these guys around until I'm just totally satisfied. Feel free to fast forward. Or maybe not. Look, I think I've just about got it now. Nudge that up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty much what I'm looking for. Okay. Now maybe we'll nudge this one down a little tiny bit. I can't help being anal about it. All right. So now we've got this entire shape in... And if we didn't have this part, it would be even fewer points. Um, 
you know, like this little boxy shape here. One, seven, eight, nine points. That's pretty cool. So we've created this whole outer shape in just nine points, and it would have been a lot less if we didn't have these six over here to deal with. Um, so, so I really, uh, I really like using these Bezier handles to get our stuff in. So we've got that. Um, let's go ahead and uh, set our color first. This is going to be orange. So we're going to take this, um, select this line that we've drawn, and we're going to click on the color down here in the properties box. Um, I have mine set to brother embroidery, which is just basic, basic colors, so that when I type in something like orange, I get orange and not, you know, some kind of weird color with the name orange in it. So orange, we say okay. All right, so now we've got it the right color. Now we are going to trace um, the, um, now we're going to trace the next part. And what I'm going to actually do for this is I'm going to actually trace this not right on the line. I'm going to trace it right in the middle here so that it builds in a little bit of overlap between, you know, like I, I want this part, this part's going to mainly be this this thicker part that's going to be a satin stitch. So I'm going to trace it kind of in the middle of this outline. Um, and uh, and we'll see how that looks when we're done. So we go back to draw with points. And um, this is going to be a cusp point, remember, because this makes kind of a heart bottom shape. So hold down shift and we're going to click there. And then we're going to say, okay, we're going to put one here and then one. Uh, th that was uh, no shift, by the way. No shift no shift and then close the shape okay so that looks weird and wobbly but remember we can go back and edit these until they're perfect so let's see first thing I'm gonna do is edit this cusp point here and move it so that that comes in straight then let's see we'll grab this curve and we'll pull his little handles out to make them look a little more curvy we'll grab this point kind of stretch its bottom out a little bit. I think we're actually already looking pretty good here. Yeah, that that actually looks acceptable to me already. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that like that. Um, I think that's fine. This is kind of supposed to be straight here and then come into the curve like that. Uh, but if you don't like it, edit, to, edit it to however you feel it, it should be. Um, okay, so next I am going to uh, get this shape in. I'm going to draw it in the same way. Draw with points. I'm going to hold down shift for this. So this is uh, a cusp. And then I'm going to let off and make this be a curve point. And then shift again. And then I think I could probably get away with just a single point from here. And then, um, and then close the shape. All right, so let's see. These guys should be fine the way they are, but we want to edit these these lines. So we're going to see pull on that one a little bit, pull on that one a little bit to get my Bezier handles out. Let's see, we'll drag this down like that and like that and then drag this one out. We'll drag this one down. Look at that. Three points. No, four points. Make that shape. God, I love it. I can't believe I haven't been doing it this way for years. <laughs> so, because um, that's really, really cool. I mean, I, I still have to think about it, you know? Like, I gotta, I can't, like, do it automatically. Like, I'm sure people that have been doing graphic design stuff for years and years can just do this without even thinking about it. But I just, I don't know. I always thought it was more complicated than it is, I guess. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do the rest of these. Um, so we basically have two more shapes. We got this one, and then this one's going to be the most complicated shape we've worked on so far. So we'll see how um, how we do with this. Uh, this guy should be fairly straightforward. I'm going to zoom in on the little apostrophe here, and we'll grab draw with points. Um, I'm going to call this a cusp, and this a cusp, and this a cusp. And then this could maybe all be one curve. I don't know. I might make this two points just to make it a little easier on myself and then close the shape. So let's see what we can do here. I'll start with this point and pull this up. And then I'll go to this point and pull this down. And this 
down and then maybe bring this back. There we go. That's pretty good. Yeah. I think that'll do. I'm getting the hang of it, guys. <laughs> All right. So down uh, into the S. This is going to have more clicks than any of the other shapes, I think. So this is clearly a cusp and a cusp. Kind of like a corner is like a cusp, you know? And then I think because this changes direction halfway through, I think we might need a point here. You know, I think we can get away with having a point there that's a regular curve and then a point here that's a cusp. And then maybe a point here that's a curve and then a cusp. And now this will try and curve this all the way around to here, I think. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get away with that or not. You know what? I'm going to backspace and I'm going to make a point down here and then a point up here and then maybe one more here and then a cusp here and here. One more curve point maybe down here and then close the shape. Okay, so I know this looks bizarre, but we're going to go one point at a time and edit it in such a way oops I didn't mean to do whatever I just did there or did I can't see the curve yeah it did it did what I wanted oops okay and then this we want this kind of coming down like this good and then this one kind of bends in the other way yeah just like that I hope you can see that well on the computer screen as well as I can. Okay, this looks okay and then we want to take this one we're gonna grab this handle and bend it out and then we'll grab this Oop! I grabbed the wrong handle. If you do this so I, basically I should have grabbed that handle instead of this one. If you do that on accident just hit the undo button up here and grab the other handle. No, apparently not. So where? what am I missing here? Not sure. Oh, there's three of them. There we go. That was the one I wanted. But remember, you can just always undo if you make a, make a bad mistake. And then here, we're going to pull on oop, that down a little bit. And let's see. I think I can do more with this side. Yeah. Just look at that. I'm, in case you can't tell, I'm very pleased with the way this is going. I really am. We bend that in a little bit, and I think that's it. So that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought. How many points is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 points. Not bad at all, if I do say so myself. Okay, so now how are we going to get these lines to be both the fill and the outline. Well, basically what we need to do is we need to copy and paste them so that we have um, two instances of each one of these lines. And we can do that easily over in our object tree here. If we um, move our mouse over to the object tree and then left click and drag a box around these shapes, we can then go up here to the copy button or you could hit control C if you want. Uh, and left click on this. It looks like two pieces of paper. Left click once on that and then left click once on the paste which looks like a clipboard uh, or you could hit control V. Left click on that and now we can see that we've got a whole nother stack of everything that we just drew. And what we want to do is we want to take this and change its color so that it's black uh, instead of orange. So we're going to go and click on our orange down here in our properties menu under the color tab. And uh, if you're under Brother Embroidery, you should just be able to type in black. And you'll get to a real black and hit OK. OK, so we've got that. But then we also, when we fill in our, um, our, our lines that we drew first, we've got another issue. And that's that this, this shape here for the O has got two holes in it. One's here and one's here. So we need there not to be stitches in there. And the way that you add those holes into the shape is by selecting all three of the shapes that are involved. So that's going to be this one, this one, and this one. So these three need to be selected. And you can hold down your control key and then just left click on each one of them in turn. And we've got all three. We can look in our properties menu and see, or in our, uh, I'm sorry, in our objects 
menu and see that we've got these three selected. Then we are going to go to uh, create under the file edit utility create right here. We want to choose create and then hover over outline. Oh, it's coming off of my screen. You guys can't see it. Why is it doing that? I want you to go the other way so everybody can see you. All right. Well, under outline, there's going to be one of the options is combine holes. It's coming off of my computer screen um, just because of the way I'm recording this video, so you can't see it. You can't see the menu. Um, I guess I could drag the program over a little bit. Create, outline, you see it there? Combine holes. That's the one that you want. We're going to hit combine holes, and that will actually combine the, the outline into one continuous piece. If we look in our object tree, we can now see that that is all one piece. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to select um, the first three here. Oops. We're going to select these first three. Hold down Control and select them. And these I want all to be a fill stitch. Okay. So we're going to go in and use the fill button. Boom. And we've got a nice fill stitch there. And for the others, for the satin stitch rather. Uh, or the uh, the the remaining outlines. We're going to make these a satin border stitch. So we're going to select the first one, um, and then we'll, we'll select all of them at once and do them all at once. We're going to click on this icon here for satin border. Okay, there we go. So now we've got our fill and our outline down. Um, let me take it out of 3D mode so we can kind of see a little bit better, and um, we can see that maybe, maybe for this one the stitch width is a little bit too wide. Okay, so maybe if we had made this a little larger, like if I hadn't had you size it down in the first place, uh, this whole thing might uh, might have worked out perfectly from the beginning. We could find out. Let me just go ahead and size this up a little bit, just, just to satisfy my own curiosity. Yeah, that's definitely what I should have had you do. Just do it at the default size. <laughs> Goober. All right, um, but that's okay. So what we can do, if if this is kind of so thick that you can tell that this satin stitch is going to just completely cover the the fill, um, we can actually change just the width of this one. If we select just this one in our object tree, we can take the stitch width and knock it down a little bit. We'll take it down by about a millimeter, and that when we sew that out, that'll look okay. Um, and if we wanted to knock it down on the rest of it, we could take it down. I think the O is going to look good like that, though. And um, we want to take a look at our satin border stitch and look for anything that looks weird and jagged, um, kind of like right here where this kind of has this odd look to it. Um, the only thing we can really do is move our points around a little bit with this. So if I select this and then grab one of the points and just kind of nudge it, nudge another shape, just nudge them. See how that kind of made that a little bit better, just the little bit of nudging that I've done? And as long as we don't mess with it too bad, there we go. See, that kind of like changed this curve into a nicer, nicer turn right here. Um, and as long as, you know, we can still see the stitches overlapping, then it should still be fine when we sew it out. Okay. Um, so if there's any other points that you look at and see, oh, that looks like kind of a weird mess, you can go in and edit that. I, I think the rest of it kind of looks okay, really. Maybe we could nudge this guy a little bit farther from everybody else. Yeah. But there we go. We've created we've created this. And one of the reasons that our satin border stitches look so good is because satin borders really, 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 really don't want you to have too many clicks. You got too many clicks, your satin borders will look a mess. They really will. Um, so uh, that is a good thing to know how to do. Um, all right, so now we're going to start talking about um, how we would go about setting some of the specific settings if we were going to sew this design out on a knit shirt and not a woven shirt or you know whatever kind of fabric it is. Wovens are great. They don't pull too much. They can support a lot of stitches. They're wonderful to embroider on. Um, but uh, uh, most of the things that we wear are knits, so you're you're likely to be sewing on something that's really stretchy when you're embroidering on um, on shirts for people. Uh, so let's talk about the settings. So 
for knit fabrics, you want to have more underlay than you would need to have on a woven because the underlay is going to hold the top fabric to the stabilizer and allow it not to curl up and and create waves uh, when it embroiders on it. Um, so to that end we are going to go and select the the three fill stitches. Alright, so we're going to take the fill, get all three of these selected, and then go to our underlay tab in our properties here. So this is my properties. The second tab here, these are our underlay settings, and we can see that by default what we have is a contour and a perpendicular. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to, instead of having a contour and a perpendicular, I'm going to keep the contour, and what that's going to do, the contour is a um, an underlay that follows the, the contour, the outside edge of our shape. Um, so we're going to leave that, we're going to turn off the perpendicular. What the perpendicular is, is it's a low density fill in that goes kind of perpendicular to our, to our top stage. To our top stitch. So if our top stitch stitch direction is horizontal, it's going to be a, a stitch that's going this way. Instead, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to turn off the um, the perpendicular, and I'm going to turn on both diagonals. And what that does is it creates kind of like a lattice effect. It's almost like a um, like a cross hatch. And what that's going to do is it's going to it's going to create this nice big flat area where the fabric can't move for our top stitches to go down on. And uh, I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to go to the stitch simulator. I'll put it in 3D so we can see the stitches better. And watch as I scroll through this design. Or, uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do is turn off the picture so that we don't have that in the way. Uh, there we go. Alright, so watch what it does. That's the contour. And this is the first diagonal. That's diagonal one. Okay, then it's going to come down and do the same thing going the other way. See how thick that is? And the advantage of doing it like this is it doesn't get thick all at once. Okay, if I just have a dense top stitch come that come down and it just it doesn't have all the structure to to hold on to and that dense fill comes in it's going to push all this fabric that's not held to the the stabilizer it's going to just push it along and create a wave but if i put kind of a relatively low density stitch down first then when we put that thicker stitch on top of it then it's not going to buckle the fabric because it's going to it's kind of creates extra fabric basically we're making essentially we're making a woven you see how this is kind of looks like it's 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 a woven you know it it's kind of like weaving a little bit of fabric underneath of there that's basically what we're doing is we're we're creating woven fabric for our top stitch to then bite into but in doing that we're making it much denser because it has all this extra stitching underneath so what we want to do is not just adjust our underlay for this let me go back and select these three guys again. We want to not just change our underlay, but we also want to change our top stitch density. Um, and uh, I'm going to go back to my create menu here to get to my properties. So my density right now is um, four point. I'm going to change this all the way to five point, which is about 10% less dense than a four point density is. And so, because I don't need as much top stitch to, to get total coverage because of how much underlay I have. Uh, and then the other thing I can do to reduce further the density of this is to change my stitch length. I'm going to change my stitch length from three and a half to four and a half millimeters. Okay. So that reduces my stitch count even further. Um, and uh, so for a fill on a, on a knit fabric, you've got a nice big wide fill. That's what you want to do. You want to set the um, the underlay to a contour, diagonal one and two, and then set your top density to um, about, you know what did I set it to? Uh, density I set to five points, and then set your stitch length to to four and a half or so, and see how that does. Um, and then um, similarly for a satin stitch, 
uh, we want to have more underlay as well. Now it's not as critical on this because so much of our satin stitch is actually overlapping our fill stitch on this. But if we had satin stitches that weren't overlapping a fill stitch, thereby giving it structure, um, we would want to make sure that we had um, under here a... Um, actually, no. It, the default is zigzag is the one I would use. So it kind of already would have been right. Uh, uh, edge run and a zigzag, yeah. So, so that's kind of, that's how I would have set that anyway for uh, for a knit. So I guess the the default setting um, is already appropriate for a knit. Um, but yeah, so so that's that. Now, for, as for sewing out on the knit, though, okay, you want to use a um, either a jersey ballpoint or stretch needle. You want to definitely use a cutaway stabilizer. And you want to fuse the stabilizer to the fabric, okay? Like a fusible, like you want to use like um, like a, a, a fusible mesh stabilizer uh, cutaway um, for your stabilizer. And and it can even be a good idea to take a piece of of tearaway if it's something really stretchy. Take a piece of tearaway and stick it under there. Like it doesn't have to be in the hoop. It's like stick it under the hoop to give it even a, a little bit more extra. You can never have too much stability when you're sewing on a knit fabric. Uh, I've found that out. Um, so even floating a piece of um, of stabilizer under there is is not a bad idea of a uh, tearaway. But you want to have a fusible uh, mesh so that it keeps the fabric from shifting. Um, and um, it even if it's something really crazy, you could even um, like you know super stretchy like you're sewing on spandex or something like that. Um, it you could even um, throw a heat away topping on there too. Well, it certainly wouldn't hurt. Um, to a heat away or a wash away. I'd probably use a heat away though. Um, so you do all those things and it should make sewing a relatively dense design like this one out on a knit fabric much easier. Um, so that is that and um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned some stuff. I'll see you in the next one.